morning, everyone. Welcome to His Way Ministry. I am Pastor Eunice. I'm really glad to worship God with you today. Let's prepare our hearts for the worship service today. Let's put our hands together, bow our heads, eyes closed. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this Sunday morning. Thank you for allowing us to worship you. Father, although we cannot come to your house, we want to praise your name. We want to worship you. Father, be with us and bless this time and let us feel your presence. Father, we want to know you more. We want to grow in you. Give us your wisdom and your spirit. And please anoint Pastor Johnny as he delivers your message today. Father, we love you and we bring you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now the announcements. Right after this service, we're going to have a cell group meeting through Zoom from 10.50 a.m. The Zoom link is the same every Sunday. So please contact your teacher or contact me if you don't have the link. Next, at the end of the sermon, you will have one or two missions for the week. And please complete the weekly mission and send a picture to your teacher or to me for 10 extra talents. Next, I think you have all received your new QT book for August and VBS materials in the package. And please start doing your QT and fill out your sermon notes and send pictures to your teacher or to me for the extra talents. And finally, our global summer online VBS is coming this week. So we will have our online VBS on Saturday, August 14th from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. And then the next day on Sunday on the 15th of August, we're going to have our last day of online VBS from 10 a.m. till noon. We're all excited and looking forward to seeing you there. And more information, you can stay tuned for our YouTube link or visit our homepage and your teachers will send you the link for Zoom as well. Let's do the intercessory prayer now. What does it mean to have an intercessory prayer? Yes, that means we pray for others. There are so many people who need our prayers. So let's pray for other people. And when we pray for others or when we pray, there is a Bible verse we always remember, right? And the verse is the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 14. Let's recite the verse together. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. So continuously from last week, we want to pray for people in pain, people in need, near and far. There are people suffering from COVID, but also suffering from difficulties in around the world due to natural disasters and poverty and conflicts and civil wars, so many other difficulties. So let's remember 
people in need in our prayer together. Let's put our hands together and bow our heads and eyes closed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to lift up all the people in pain and in difficulties this morning. Father, we are small and we don't have much to share, but we know you are our mighty God. You are a good God. So in you, we can help people. We can reach out to be to other people in need. Father, please, first of all, remember people who don't know you and let them know you and let them be saved so that they can be your children. Father, there are people working hard to reach out to them and help those people and share your love. Father, please strengthen them and encourage them and keep them safe. From the heat, from the COVID, from all the other natural disasters, so that they can be your hands and your feet and your people, your children to work for your kingdom. Father, give us your wisdom and your spirit so we can continuously pray for them and we can reach out to them and help them with things that you have given to us and help us to remember them in prayer. And we know our prayers can change the world and make the difference because you will listen to our prayer. And we thank you for being our Father. And thank you for allowing us to be your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now it's time for the memory verse. So today's memory verse is from the second Timothy chapter two, verse 15. And this memory verse is related with today's message. So let's read together the verse in one voice. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Amen. Great job, everyone. Let's recite the verse or read aloud the verse one more time. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth Amen Good job everyone Now Let's stand up wherever you are and praise our good God.
Now it's time for the scripture reading. Let's open our Bibles to the Philippians chapter 3. It is in the New Testament. So now let's stand up wherever you are to show our respect to Word of God. We're going to read the Philippians chapter 3 verses 17 to 21. It is in the New Testament and we're going to read from NIV version. Verse 17, let's read in one voice. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Verse 18, for as I have often told you, before and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Verse 19. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. And their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. Verse 20, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 21, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Amen. Now you may be seated. Now let's welcome Pastor Johnny and listen carefully to the Word of God. Good morning, this is Pastor Johnny. How are you guys doing? It's very hot these days, right? Are you guys surviving with the heat? Make sure you drink a lot of water, okay? And and I also heard that there will be there will be VBS next Saturday and Sunday. Excited, right? Actually, I'll be there too as a, a game host, and uh, there will be a lot of interesting and fun games for you guys. So please make sure you attend all the sessions, and please look forward to joining in games, guys. Anyway, I'm here to share God's Word with you guys this morning. Before we dive into the passage, I have a question. What does the word mean, the word citizenship mean? Do you guys know, know the word citizenship? The Cambridge Dictionary says citizenship is the state of being a member, being a member of a particular country and living rights because of it. So the word citizenship basically shows which country you belong to. My citizenship is South Korea. And maybe some of you have American citizenship or other countries' citizenship. Likewise, we all have citizenships on the earth. But you know what? We all have one more citizenship. In today's passage, Paul talks about our second new, real, new citizenship we have in Christ. So let's take a look. Today, Paul introduces two groups of people in the passage. One group is those who are earthly minded. And the other is those who are heavenly minded. Firstly, Paul tells Christians in the city of Philippi to follow himself and to follow him, follow those who live like him. Then he explains the people group who live in the opposite way. They are the ones who set their minds 
on earthly things, earthly things. Verse 19 says, their destiny is, their, their end is destruction, and their God is their stomach, and their glory is their shame. Paul's expression here looks pretty violent and harsh, right? It looks very bad people. However, in fact, this people group represents all sinners in the earth, including you and I. People all live with their own purpose and goals in life. That's not bad, right? However, however, because, because we are sinners, we cannot set the purpose and goals correctly without the help of the Holy Spirit. Without guidance of God, we cannot set our purpose correctly. All human beings created for the glory of God put their hopes, their, their hearts in earthly things because of sinful nature. And we try to fill our stomach, fill our glory by giving glory to people. What's more unfortunate is that no matter how much money we have, how much honor we have, and how successful we are, we are not satisfied at all. We often see ourselves, right, and also other people like this in the world. And Paul says their end is destruction. Then what is the, the other group, the opposite group in the passage? It is those who set their minds on heavenly things. This is the life that Paul wanted Christians to follow. Paul describes this group as people with heavenly citizenship, guys. Heavenly citizenship. All those who accepted Jesus Christ and have eternal life can set their minds on heavenly things because they have heavenly citizenship. This is the image of godly life that you and I should follow. People who set their minds on heavenly things, actually they have two characteristics. The first is to have hope in Christ, hope in Christ. Everyone who set their minds on things in heaven, they wait for Jesus to come again. They don't rely on this world too much, but live looking forward to Jesus, looking forward to heaven. They wait for the second coming of Jesus and their eternal lives with Jesus Christ. Even if they don't have much things on the earth, or, or even if people around them hate them, they are not shaken because there are something more important to them. Because they know this, this world is not our final home. We have more. We have new heaven and, heaven and earth. Because there are something more important to them. Heavenly things, heavenly blessings from God. That's the first characteristic. They have hope in Christ. And what's the second characteristic of those who set their minds on heavenly things? It is that they do their best before God than anyone else in the world. 1 John 3, 3 says, All who have this hope in Jesus Christ purify themselves just as God is pure. Those who have hope in heaven seek purity, seek purity in their personal lives. When Paul wrote this letter to the church at Philippi, there, are, there were some people in the church saying, if if they believed in Jesus Christ, they would not need all the laws, all God's law. They don't need it anymore, nor pursue godly life because they have Jesus. 
all the laws and they don't need to follow. They don't need to live the godly life. That's what they said. But the Bible gives a warning to them and says, Christians, for the glory of God, the citizens of heaven cannot live in vain in this world. Also in the New Testament, all the books, all the books after the four Gospels teach us how Christians should live on the earth. We must do our best for the glory of God, even though we do not put our purpose in this earth. So, two characteristics of heavenly people, heavenly citizens is, first, hope in Christ. They have hope in Christ. Second, they do their best for the glory of God. In today's passage, Paul warned the believers at Philippi not to follow those who put their minds on earthly things and argue them and, and urge them to set their hearts on heavenly things. Those who set their hearts, set their minds in heaven will wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ with hope and they will pursue holiness on the earth by doing their best for the glory of God. That's the message of today. Then, what is the lesson that this text teaches us today? First, we need to point out this first. Our citizenship is in heaven, guys. As I said in the beginning, we all have citizens, citizenship according to our countries. But when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we receive another citizenship, which is heavenly citizenship. If you truly, truly accepted Jesus, you already have the new citizenship, guys. And this citizenship is very different from the existing, the old citizenship we have. What's the difference? First, expiration date is different. The citizenship of earthly countries will be lost when we die. But the citizenship of heaven exists forevermore, even if we die on the earth, since, since it continues in heaven. Also, the earthly citizenship might be taken away or, or changed by the government or the country. However, the heavenly citizenship cannot never can never be taken away or changed since the Holy Spirit firmly upholds our citizenship. How grateful it is, how blessed it is. We are so blessed to have this eternal and unchanging citizenship in Christ. However, unfortunately, there are too many times when we forget that we have this new citizenship. That's the problem. When we forget the citizenship of heaven, we live again with our hearts set on the earth. And we become like those who put their minds to the things of the earth. In today's passage, their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. When we put our minds, our hearts to the earthly things, when we too much focus on those things, we will think good grades become our final goal. And we will try to please our friends more than God. And we will fall in love with something more interesting than worshiping God. At schools and family, we will use terms of abuse and attitudes that God un, God un, God un pleased with. All those things, all those things are not images of heavenly citizens. Children with heavenly citizenship will love their neighbors and they will do their best by studying hard 
and waiting for, wait for Jesus to come again. God is speaking to us through today's passage that we should remember, remember our citizenship in heaven. Then how can we apply this passage to our daily moment? I'd like to give you two weekly missions, guys. Two. The first mission is a daily prayer of citizenship. Not just daily prayer, but daily prayer of citizenship. This week, when you pray, please add this phrase. God, help me to live as a citizen of heaven. It doesn't matter when you do it, when you do it, you can do this in the morning or, or at night. It's also good to pray this when you eat, you know, when you have meal. Say, God, help me to live as a child of heaven. Help me to live as a citizen of heaven. And remember, you have this heavenly citizenship. So let's pray like this every day uh, this week and remember our eternal and unchanging citizenship, guys. The second is Summer BVS, guys, Summer BVS. It will start next Saturday, as I said, and although it's online, teachers and pastors, they tried so hard. They prepare so hard. So let's participate in all sessions, guys, and let's enjoy it. You might ask me how Summer VBS is related to the heavenly citizenship. Let me explain. What was the second characteristic of heavenly citizenship? It was to pursue holiness and live to the best for the glory of God, right? And it's also connected to the VBS, guys, that's in front of you. Since the VBS glorifies the name of God by worshiping together knowing Him more through the Bible. So through the VBS, let's get closer to the Word of God and also get to know our God more through the VBS. So Jam children, through Jesus, we all have the heavenly citizenship. Please, please keep this in your mind when you grow. I hope that you will always remember this truth in your life and enjoy the benefits that comes from the eternal and unchanging heavenly citizenship, guys. So let's pray together. At your heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the heavenly citizenship in Jesus Christ. Lord, how blessed it is to have this citizenship and enjoy the benefits of it, Lord. Lord, I pray that all of our GEM children and all of our GEM members to remember this when we live out our daily moments and help us to live as a citizen of heaven by doing our best for the glory of God and by having hope in Christ, Lord. And also we pray for Summer VBS, Lord, through the event, through the uh, through the VBS, Lord, we want to glorify your name and we want to know you more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's close our worship service with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, everyone and see you later at Zoom. Bye.